In celebration of hitting 20,000 subscribers, I decided to take on the quest of finding the best Plex client available. It did cost over $500 to get this project up and going, but thanks to a few loyal patrons and all of my wonderful subscribers for watching my videos, I was able to offset some of that cost and really put this topic to the test. So today, let's cover some of my testing criteria and find out what my results were. To start things off, yes, I know this array of media players does not cover every single option available today. However, I do feel as if it covers almost all of the most popular devices. This includes the Nvidia Shield, the newest Fire TV and the Fire Stick, Roku 4, the Xbox One, and finally, the Intel NUC, which was graciously provided to me by Abhi from Dallas, Texas, who is a loyal subscriber to Buy My Bits. Thanks again, Abhi, for letting me test out your hardware. As for my testing criteria, well, I wanted to cover the things that affect me the most during my usage. So I decided to compare the speed, remote controls, audio abilities, and price. Speed will include the Plex app starting up, loading movie details, browsing a movie library, starting a movie, changing the quality, and fast forwarding. For the remote, I will look at a functionality and ease of use. When it comes to audio, however, I will only be focusing on the client's surround sound capability. I thought about covering music, but I actually don't own any music to use, nor do I have any experience really playing music on Plex. I know it could be a big feature to some, but I really want to focus on video playback for the home theater experience. And for the last criteria, I think price is actually self-explanatory. So, Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right in and talk about speed. First up, we have starting the Plex application. To make things easier here, I edited all of my footage together so I could compare them side by side. And right out of the gate, the Nvidia Shield started up almost instantly. Right behind it was the Intel NUC running the Plex Media Player software on Windows 7. Then the full-size Fire TV followed by the Roku 4. Interesting enough, the Fire Stick and Xbox battled for last place with the Xbox only being a little under a couple seconds faster than the Fire Stick. Now I find this very surprising because of how much more power the Xbox is supposed to have compared to the other clients. I actually expected the Fire Stick to drag its feet, but not the Xbox. Either way, the clear winner here is the Shield with an almost instant startup. Next, I wanted to see which device could load up details for a movie the fastest, and the Intel NUC won this fight, but only by a split second. Right behind it was the Roku 4. The Shield and the Fire TV seemed to load at the same speed, but the Shield's animation made it feel just a little slower. Coming in fifth place again was the Xbox One, followed by the Fire Stick, which took a full three seconds to load. So again, the Xbox One surprises me by being this slow, to the point of being compared to the Fire Stick. Personally though, I think that with a few software updates, Plex could be optimized to run a little faster. However, the Intel NUC running the Plex Media Player software came out ahead. This actually leads me into my next round of testing too, where it also proved its worth as the fastest media browser. As you can see here, the NUC consistently has the smoothest browsing experience while moving through the movie library. The Fire TV does pretty good, but if you go too fast, it has a little trouble keeping up with itself. And the stick suffers from the same thing, but it is a lot worse. I feel like the shield is just a little worse than the Fire TV because of the delay it has while loading the poster art. The Xbox One and the Roku both have issues with delayed poster art, but I feel as if the Xbox is just a little bit better. This is mainly because I really only have issues with the Xbox poster arts if I go too fast, while the Roku seems to have issues at any speed. Next up, I tested out how fast it took each client to start a movie. While this doesn't impact you as much as maybe trying to browse for a movie, I still feel as if it was an important topic. And in the blink of an eye, the Intel NUC started playing the movie before a couple of the other clients even had a chance to change to a black screen. I mean, this thing's pretty fast. Not far behind it though was the Nvidia Shield, who did take a while to get going, but after that loaded the movie impressively quick. Although I should say, as a side note, that even though the Shield loaded the movie quickly, it did seem to take just a little bit longer for it to start playing the audio. The Fire TV came next, followed by the Roku 4, and then the Fire Stick. Much to my disappointment, albeit not surprising anymore, the Xbox One decided to join the game a couple hours later. Okay, maybe not an actual couple hours, but it sure feels like it when you see all this happening side by side. Changing the quality of playback, I actually found interesting, primarily because not only did the Intel not come in fourth place, but the Fire TV and Fire Stick were so close to each other, it was almost a tie. 
But to get technical, after comparing the audio sound for my remote key clicking and editing, the Fire Stick actually beat the Fire TV by a split second for the number one spot, which honestly is a little mind blowing, but right behind them was the Shield and the NUC, followed by the Xbox and the Roku 4. I was really expecting the NUC to switch faster, so I even tested it a couple more times. In the end though, the results were the same. Again, pertaining to the audio, while the Fire TV and Stick did load the video faster, the audio took longer to load than the Shield did. I'm still going to count it as the win for the Fire clients, but I just wanted to at least share my results. My final speed test was to see how fast each client can jump to a new time in a movie. While some clients fast forward a little differently than others, I made sure to only compare the speed of how long it took for it to actually change to that point in time. For my results, I found that the NUC came out on top again with a near instant switching time. Right behind it was a Fire TV and the Roku 4. The Nvidia Shield was just a little faster than the Fire Stick, but then we have the Xbox. This time not by a lot, but still last place. My final speed results for all of my tests combined will come in the form of points. I decided to award 5 points for first place, 4 points for second place, and so on. Just keep in mind that this is kind of a crude way to rank all these clients because each test could carry different amount of weight for each person. So for example, I may care more about how fast I can browse through my movies, while you might care more about how long it takes to seek ahead in a movie. So while I give you my final verdict on speed, it's up to you to consider each test result individually based off what is most important to you. But without further delay, here are my results. The top three contenders were the Intel NUC, Fire TV, and the Nvidia Shield in that order. A whopping 26 points going to the NUC as it dominated all but two categories. The worst one being its ability to change quality during a movie. The Fire TV consistently came in second or third place throughout most of the test, earning it a total of 21 points. And the Shield suffered just a little while loading details seeking through a movie, granting it only 18 points. The last three devices definitely surprised me because the Xbox came in dead last with only 4 points, pretty much sucking at everything. While the Roku 4 just barely beat the Fire Stick by 1 point. Now, although the speed of each device does have a big impact on the viewing experience, I feel as if the remote control contributes just as much, if not more, to the overall usability of each client. And this is actually why I was so disappointed with the speed of the Xbox One, because the Xbox Media Remote, by far, is my favorite remote control. It may be a little bulky compared to some of the other remotes, but it's not necessarily a bad thing for somebody like me who has full-size hands. The big thing for me is having full control over playback by having a play slash pause button accompanied by a fast forward and rewind button. I know this sounds really petty, but when I get to the Nvidia Shield remote, you'll understand my frustration. Another big thing is volume control. The volume button actually connects with the home receiver and adjusts the volume with the Xbox remote, making it so I never have to touch my receiver remote when I decide to crank it up. The last thing I like is that it will light up if you move it, which sounds kind of dumb I know, but if you have a black table with a black sofa, watching a movie in the dark, being able to find your remote just by moving around a little is amazing. And while it doesn't have anything to do directly with the remote, Xbox's voice control feature over Plex allows me to pause and resume playback with just a simple command, which adds to my reasons as to why the Xbox has been my daily driver for so long. The only thing I don't like about it is the whole line of sight thing on the remote. This forces me to waste a ton of energy by having to lift up my arm and point it at the Xbox like it's 1955 or something. My second favorite remote has to be the Roku 4s. Keeping the same play, pause, and skip buttons as the Xbox, it also adds an option to use a set of headphones, which I find very unique and a handy feature that can offer some late night movie enthusiasts the ability to easily enjoy their media without waking up the neighbors. You also gain the advantage of not having to point your remote at the Roku 4 because it does not require any line of sight. And while it does give you an option to control the volume, it only works for the Roku itself and not the TV or your receiver. And having to use two remotes if I wanted to crank up the volume really is the big thing for me. I can't ignore the fact that I don't get the fancy video preview thumbnails when I used to seek buttons, but I hate having to pick up another remote. I just have way better things to do with my time. This brings me to my third favorite remote, or remotes, the Amazon Fire lineup. The Fire TV remote definitely has a higher build quality than the cheaper Fire Stick remote, but you can pay $10 more to get the same quality remote for the stick. I honestly just kind of want to see what both of them look like. 
They keep the same play, pause, and seek buttons as the others, but just like the Roku, using the fast forward or rewind button does not bring up the video preview thumbnails. You do still have the advantage though of not needing line of sight, but for some unholy reason, you have absolutely no ability to control the volume. And I have no idea why. And finally, my absolute least favorite remote control, the NVIDIA Shield. Now I wanted to go directly into the features that this thing has to offer, but as I started writing the script, I could not help but to type out what I hated first. So here we go. While I admire what the NVIDIA Shield was trying to attempt here with the simplistic design and modern look, I absolutely hate everything. It's overly complicated because you don't have the buttons you need. If you want to do something simple like pause a movie or fast forward, you are forced to pull up a menu first and then navigate to your option. This is stupid and I hate it and I wish it would die in a fire. And then we have the volume control. I mean, not only does it not control your TV or your receiver, but it also uses this stupid touch sensing slider thing that can at times be heavily delayed, causing you to over crank your audio and scare your cat. But hey, it's nice and thin, does look good, and does not require line of sight. A small bonus to this though is that because you have to bring up the menu to fast forward, the default option gives you the video preview thumbnails. Now this is actually something you can achieve on the other clients if they don't use them by default, but it does require you to bring up the menu first rather than using the quick buttons. Except for the Xbox. The Xbox Media Remote is awesome. For all of the faults I found with the Shield's remote control, I do have to say that it is one of two devices that I tested that has the ability to play 7.1 surround sound through DTS or True HD. The other device, as you might have guessed, is the Intel NUC. Both devices were able to directly stream both audio formats and through my testing, each speaker was mapped correctly. For the Fire TV, Fire Stick, and Roku, however, DTS and True HD was transcoded and reduced down to 5.1 surround sound, making them still capable enough to satisfy a large amount of home users with a standard 5.1 surround sound setup. But as for the Xbox, again, much to my disappointment, failed miserably by not only breaking 7.1 down to 5.1, it also screwed up the speaker mapping, sending the rear speaker surround sound all the way to the very back speakers, essentially ignoring the speakers it was supposed to be using altogether. <sighs> So for my last segment, I will compare price. And yes, I know, some devices might be on sale at some point or have some bundling options, but I was trying to compare the basic retail values that I could find for each one at the time of this video. Also, as you may have noticed, I did not cover any remote controls for the Intel NUC. I actually did this for two reasons. One, there are a lot of universal or other remote controls that you can use that works with an HTPC. So judging one remote just wouldn't be fair. And two, well, I don't have one, so. With that said, the prices I'm about to list will not include the purchase of a remote for the Intel NUC, so just keep that in mind. And said prices will be at what they were at the time of making this video for each device. Okay, on with the pricing. The most expensive device I tested for this video was the Intel NUC, and for $280, that doesn't even include the remote. However, there are a few different options for Intel NUCs, some more expensive and some less. And really, an HTPC can be built out of all kinds of spare hardware. The NUC was only used in this example because it is a small form factor device with low power usage, and it was sent to me for free to borrow. Next, we have the Xbox One sold by Microsoft for only $250, plus $25 more for the remote, which brings you to a total of $275. Right under that was the Nvidia Shield for $250, $200 for the Shield, $50 for the remote. And then we have the Roku 4 at only $130, the Fire TV at a solid $100, and finally the Fire Stick with a price of only $40 with the cheaper remote. So, what does this all mean? Well, honestly, everything boils down to what you prefer and what you can afford. For example, I still love the Xbox One because of the control I have over Plex with the remote and the voice control. Even though it has turned out to be slow as hell, and yes, the surround sound sucks, I still prefer it. If I can get the same voice control and remote control usage out of an HTPC and still be able to get the video preview thumbnails that I get with the Xbox, I would definitely use an HTPC. The speed of the HTPC cannot be ignored, and being the most capable device for supporting the most features and formats, it all makes the HTPC a very enticing option, especially when it can run quickly and smoothly off of something as small and affordable as an Intel NUC.
Now between the Roku 4 and the Fire TV, I would say that since the Fire TV is not only cheaper, but also is much faster, that it is a very clear winner for me. But if you don't mind the speed as much and you want to gain some features like basic volume control and headphones, then the extra $35 for the Roku 4 might be worth it. And then we have the Fire Stick, which personally I would never use a stick as any kind of a daily driver because everything I do want it just feels really sluggish and kind of annoying. However, it is very small and very portable, making it the perfect travel companion. On that note, Roku does actually offer a stick version of their device, but unfortunately, I did not include that in this video. If I had to assume though, I would say that the differences between the Roku and the Roku stick is very similar to the ones of the Fire TV and the Fire Stick. Honestly, I just pretty much forgot that the Roku even offered a stick. I'd be interested to know though what you use and why you prefer it, so let me know in the comments. I know that I didn't cover every single device that's available today, but I did try to cover most of the mo more popular options. And furthermore, a lot of my tests can and most likely will change as time progresses due to software updates. So hopefully something like the Xbox and its much beefier hardware specs will be able to run much quicker and smoother in the future. Before I wrap up this video, I would also like to ask anybody who uses an HTPC with Plex Media Player software and some sort of a universal or media remote to tell me what they use, how well it works, and what they like about it. I'm curious to know what's out there and what people actually use. Okay guys, that's it for today. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe below, and have a great day.